Human Resources Employees. What are your best HR nightmare stories? One place I used to work, one of the upper management guys who was in charge of the warehouse would hop on the forklifts and do donuts. He had colon cancer and was always having surgeries to remove another section of colon so he had a colostomy bag. He would like squeeze air out of his colostomy bag while he was doing donuts on the forklifts. It would waft this god awful stench everywhere. Everyone thought it was hilarious and would immediately run outside for a smoke break until the scent dissipated. The smell was bad enough it made a co-worker puke. Also had another manager there eat 6 10 sacks of White Castle sliders for lunch. He ate the last 10 sack on the toilet. I have no idea how he could eat with the sounds and stenches he was emitting from his other end. It sounded like someone trying to drown Donald Duck in a puddle while tooting a tuba. No one went into that bathroom for the rest of the day. Where the heck do you work OMG? I am on the HR team that supports a wide variety of US cities for our company, including our colorful Florida locations. This is the best story I heard. We had some woman trying to avoid doing work by sitting out in her car in the parking lot. While she was hiding out there, she needed to use the restroom. Well, instead of going back inside, or doing literally anything else, she decides to pee out her car window. Even though I am also a woman, I was impressed and disgusted by the physics behind this featuring. She had stuck her bare butt outside the window and just went for it. Unbeknownst to her, her male co-worker had arrived at work late due to an appointment. He drove past to find a parking spot as this was happening, and got full view. He then reported the incident to us. One of our HR people had to investigate this, and sure enough, parking lot cameras could corroborate his story. Our HR person confronted the woman. Her response, well how did he know it was me? It could have been anyone. We thought, okay fair enough. The cameras aren't CSI grade zoom, so we only saw the butt part. It was harder to completely identify the face. So we went back to the male peer and asked how he knew it was her. His response? Oh it was definitely her. The face tattoos are pretty recognizable. We definitely don't get paid enough for this. The idea that someone working on an our team has the username thought source pleases me. My friend was doing hiring for a staffing agency during college. A guy who we went to high school came in looking for a job. He told the candidate that he had two jobs. One paid 10 an hour and the other paid 11. The only thing was that the 11 an hour job requires a drug test. And if you fail the drug test you can't get either. He said that he wanted the 11 an hour job now we knew him well enough to know that he liked smoking. So my friend reiterated the drug test fail rule. Dude said he was good on Friday to take the test Monday. Come Monday he took the drug test. P hot for weed. C. Amphetamines. And some other crap that gets out of your system in 48 hours. Obviously. He tried to score the highest on the drug test. Not in HR but my previous senior manager was renowned for sleeping with colleagues. He was married with kids. Before I started there I remember seeing a huge banner plastered across a footbridge that everyone leaving work by car had to drive under to get to the motorway. The sign said, Joe Bloggs, not actual name, cheating bastard. Turns out he was cheating on his wife with a team leader from another dept, and was cheating on his mistress with another team leader from yet another department. Both the team leaders found out about each other and had a massive fight in the reception of the building. But by the time I started at the company both of the team leaders were no longer working there. I work in recruitment so not exactly HR. A guy had applied for a job that required a DBS check. Police check. He filled the DBS and all his other checks flew through. The DBS came back as he had committed a crime in the past. Now on our end only the guy who will be applicants manager and a senior in our department can see the DBS result. He called the department unhappy the job had been withdrawn. He then sent a long email and begging for another chance. He said when he was 17 he beat two women up then threatened the cops with a gun. We're in the UK so guns are pretty rare especially in the 1970s he went into detail about the attempted rape this dude wanted a job in a hospital. It's a no mate. I only wanted to rape. There was a dude in our other facility that was going around and wiping their butt and shoving the crap back up into the toilet paper dispenser so that when the next person goes to reach. Came into work early for a morning shift. 
work in an industrial lab. Heard noises from the back corner of the office portion of the building but can't make out what they are because of distortion. Head that way to see what was going on as I was the only one there. So I thought, at 3am, see my lab manager freaking the district manager, her boss, while the HR rep for the district is sitting there, enjoying the view. I noped and went to the lab and tried to forget what happened. To be fair, relationships between direct reporters needs to be brought to HR's attention. I just didn't realize a demonstration was also required. The workers had races with those motorized forklifts. One did not know that there was freshly poured concrete. Got the forklift stuck in it. Damage was more than 100 euros. Big foundation for a new storage facility. According to the union contracts, such damages are paid for by the company unless it was intentionally done. Walked into my boss's office. Told him about the situation. Hum okay shadowy. Can you please return to your office for a while? Okay. As soon as I was at my desk, I heard the loudest got vadam to she's from his office. Then my phone rang, and he told me to inform the insurance, which ended up paying less than 10k of the damage. Otherwise, the usual HR nightmare is just people not keeping their documents in order. Looks like Klaus wasn't educational enough. Saw the guy blatantly lie in his recruitment form, watching him fill it out in front of me. It was total bollocks. Apparently he was 15th in line to the throne, went to Eton, studied at Oxford and served in the army for 9 years after training at Sandhurst. Not bad for a 21 year old, who had in fact spent 3 years in a young offenders institute, battling a drug problem. TBF if he hadn't written 9 years he'd have an average track record for a royal that age. 1. I had a bookkeeper that paid himself 2 checks every week, we did not catch it for a year. 2. Another bookkeeper quit and files for unemployment. He then claimed a claim with the OC that he had a disability and we failed to make accommodations for him. The disability was alcoholism, and the accommodations were leaving early to attend AA meetings. Seriously, we had to hire a lawyer to fight that. 3. A guy I hired hurt himself on the first hour of the first day of work. He claimed he fell and hit his head on the wall. He was out 4 weeks on workman's comp form the concussion. Then when he came back on light duty, he could only do desk work but managed to fall again in the bathroom and hit his head again. It took me 9 months to get rid of him. It turns out this was not his first rodeo. When I called his former employer the lady I spoke to made an offhand comment about workplace accidents and head injuries and the importance of cameras in the workplace. 4. While doing a remodel of a museum, one of my employees helped himself to a gun that was on display. It was very ugly and embarrassing for everyone. My company was kicked off the job and banned from ever working for them again. I fired the guy and he filed a discrimination claim with EOC because I did not fire the whole crew, just him. I got more. He filed a discrimination claim with EOC because I did not fire the whole crew, just him. What a little b. I had a friend working a GM when HR thought it was a good idea to test everyone on the skill set needed for their department regardless of how long they were in their position. Long careers, 15, 20, 25 years were ruined because even though they worked there for a long time with a long string of great performance reviews, they didn't pass the test that measured what HR thought was required for the department. Say you're a materials expert working in a design department. You may know barely enough in the CAD system to draw a cylinder. On the other hand, given a cylinder, you can whip out all the properties that cylinder would have if it were made from aluminum, cold rolled steel, fiberglass etc. You'd be out of your job because HR said you had to have a certain level of CAD expertise even if it wasn't relevant to your role in the design process. I was sitting in the HR office with one of the members of HR. I was waiting on her to finish a form so that we could go eat lunch. Suddenly, this guy comes in, he was a young temp employee and had only been there a week or so, and says he has something he needs to talk about. I start to get up to leave when he blurts out that he doesn't like that fact that there are so many gays and lesbians working in the company. Once he says that I sit right back down. The HR employee asks him to clarify and he goes on about how his trainer was gay and his team leader is gay and his manager is a lesbian. All true. And he doesn't feel comfortable working around all these gays and lesbians. 
The HR employee asks him is anyone has every sexually harassed him, which he says they haven't. She then says so you want me to fire these employees, strictly based on their sexual orientation, just so you don't feel uncomfortable he says yes, after which she tells him to leave the office. She then calls in his manager and talks with her about it. He ends up quitting by the end of the week. Once he says that I sit right back down. LOL I can just imagine. I would be like yes I'm not getting a lunch today internally. My friend who worked in HR told me about her old job where the boss had drilled a hole from his office through to the ladies changing rooms and was perv whacking it every chance he could get. They found out because someone saw the light through the hole as he took the cover off for a peek. He denied everything and they had to take a DNA sample from the carpet under the hole which confirmed it was a, him and B, that he had indeed been whacking away. Oh man, I was an hour officer in the army, so men it. Soldiers arrives to our unit, asks to go on leave to get his new wife and move her in. No problem. Get a call from the inspector general a few days later saying he abandoned his wife and kids. The guy, a paralegal, was now married in NY and California and had been fraudulently married to the CA woman to draw the benefits and just tried ghosting her. Had an officer being forced to resign over a DUI. Her last day was on a Friday, but on Monday, her urinalysis came back hot for C. The only thing that could keep her from getting out that Friday was the court martial. Sid calls her and she waves her rights and they video record her uncoerced confession. This gave them everything they needed to court martial a captain. She received a bad conduct discharge, lost all her benefits and a security clearance. She was a military police captain, and she gave them the confession. Had a female soldier who came up hot for M. Twice. She was showing up for 5 minutes a day because she thought she couldn't be marked A while she was, that she could still get paid, she wasn't, and that she couldn't stand trial. She could. When she realized all this, she became a deserter, which puts a warrant out for your arrest. Five months later, I get a call from the police in a nearby big city that she was picked up for prostitution and selling drugs. Had a soldier break into his neighbor's apartment after he heard gunshots. The husband murdered the wife and was about to murder their friend. He saw my soldier in his uniform, thought he was police, then killed himself. I got to process that guy for the soldier's medal, the highest medal for non-combat heroism and the military since his bravery of breaking into a place where he heard gunshots undoubtedly saved that girl's life. HR can be wild. Last one was a great ending to all crappy stuff. I don't work in HR but I do have a nightmare HR story. When I was on my gap year I worked a part time job as a fitness instructor at a leisure center. One of my co-workers, call him Bill, was a nice guy and I would often sit and chat at him on my breaks etc. Long term GF and baby at home. As part of my job I used to teach spinning classes on a fairly regular basis. I would normally leave my phone in the staff room while I was teaching, or behind the reception desk. Both these places were secure and my phone had a passcode on it. I didn't want it going off while I was teaching because when it received calls texts it interfered with the stereo in the spin studio. I didn't have a locker or anything where I could store it. Sometime in around January I was at at uni for an interview weekend. My girlfriend at the time had come to pick me up and while she was waiting in the car, she was scrolling through my messages on my iPad. When I got in the car she showed me one of my chats and said why did you send this video to Bill? I had no recollection of sending any videos to Bill, since I did not speak to him outside of work beyond I'm going to be late or similar. I thought it was a mistake but as I scrolled further back up I saw that I had sent this same video to Bill a couple of weeks prior. Feeling thoroughly perplexed I clicked into the video and saw it was a video of me, 20F, and my girlfriend, 26F, on holiday in Thailand. I'd like to stress that it was not a sexual video, we were just joking around but we had just got out the shower and were both naked. At this point I'm still thinking it's some kind of big mistake as Bill is a nice guy with a baby at home. However, I look a little closer and realize that the dates times of when I had sent these videos was at times I was teaching spin classes and therefore had left my phone unattended. Bill, being the sicker he was, had the obviously seen me put my passcode into my phone during all the times we had been sat chatting on breaks etc. And had memorized it. 
He had then taken the opportunity to scroll through all my personal photos and videos when I had left my phone and attended to go and teach classes. I'm assuming that he had deleted the video once, hence why he had sent it to himself again a couple of weeks later. He'd also deleted the chat history from my iPhone but hadn't realized it synced to my iPad. This was in around 2012 BTW. I would only have been about 18 stroke 19 at the time when the videos were taken. Obviously I reported this to my manager and to HR but it was a bit of a minefield for them to navigate. I don't know what he told them but I imagine it was along the lines of saying I sent them to him of my own free will. How would he have known my password etc. It took a long while to get sorted but in the end he did get sacked. Thankfully, the police also paid him a visit so I'm sure he had some explaining to do to his so. We had a guy in one of our stores submit a grievance to us about how we were discriminating against him because we were giving a female 7 months pregnant colleague some extra breaks. She had a medical note confirming the reasonable adjustments needed. So she could sit down for an extra 5 minutes every so often because he was unable to get pregnant so could not take advantage of the same extra breaks. I didn't really know where to start with that one. One of my company's own HR reps had to be redirected into a different job, and then finally requested to resign. After the following incident, a co-worker of mine is originally from Hawaii, and her son still lives there. After the ACA was passed in Congress, she went into HR to put her son under her insurance. He was still under 26 at the time so he was newly qualified under the law. This particular HR rep told my co-worker that she actually couldn't put her son on her insurance since he didn't live in the United States. Knew a weird dude who would sometimes do all nighters in the office. A lady got there early one day, around 6.30 am, and found the guy masturbating to pee at his cubicle. Crazy thing is, he wasn't fired. I guess he was good enough at working that they just moved him to another department. I was asked to translate for some visitors from the parent company at a celebration held by HR. I stopped translating around the time the director of HR started asking overly personal, sexual questions to the two young HR office ladies. A couple days later, during a private ball session, I recounted the story to a friend who happened to be a director from the parent company. He put on his professional hat and asked me to write it up and submit a complaint to the parent company's HR. Nightmare ensued. Local head of HR had been in charge of the sexual harassment avoidance training that had narrowly saved them from lawsuit. CEO of local company insisted that I bring the story out in public and talk to the director of HR like an adult. Parent company HR brought in HR from another local subsidiary to perform an investigation. It became painfully obvious who the whistleblower was. Nothing came of the investigation that I heard about, but the next year was made to be a living heck for me by the local company. Even the office lady who had been the subject of the sexy inquisition resented the fact that she was in the center of a controversy. I left that company as soon as I possibly could and was not saddened to hear of their bankruptcy and partition a couple of years later. They had other issues as well. TL. DR. Got harassed out of my job by HR after reporting HR director for sexual harassment. And here we have a prime example of why people choose not to report things. It's not the best thing to do for the situation. I used to work for a company that is an hour nightmare. Several events occurred. 1. I was hired as a director of quality regulatory so I come in and start sprucing up documents, policy and all the essential stuff. A VP of sales doesn't take to kindly to fixing the stuff they were lying, fraud, about and tells me in front of HR, I'm going to make you so miserable that you quit this job still works there. 2. Another sales guy went into a coma, health issue, and the higher ups decided that they could fire him to keep their insurance cheaper and not pay out his life insurance. Luckily HR pointed out the potential lawsuit, after they debated the cost of the lawsuit and whether they could win they kept him on until he passed a week later. 3. When I left, I had my own company they decided they owned any IP I created when I was employed there. I had no contract and non-competes aren't legal in my state. 4. The C-level employees all were convicted of corruption in multiple countries and are in jail. The last company I worked for did not have an HR department. My boss was one of the worst people I have ever met. 
and if they did have HR she would have been gone a long time ago. The one incident that made me hightail it out of there was she used a doctor's note of mine to get out of a class she was taking. A month or so before I had a missed miscarriage at 18 weeks and had to have a DNC. My doctor wrote me a note for work so I could have 2 weeks for recovery and time to process what had just happened. I found multiple doctored copies of my doctor's note on the printer. The dates were changed and a part in the note excusing me from work was changed to class. I remember seeing it and my heart dropped and I immediately had anxiety. I also thought at first someone else was going through the same thing until I looked at it closer and realized it was mine. I felt extremely used and exposed. A co-worker of mine actually walked in on her trying to fix it up on the computer. I ended up telling the CEO cause it was her boss. I left my co-worker out of the story because she was a single mom and my boss was lenient with her hours so I didn't want her to make it harder on her. He encouraged me to talk to her about it, which I did and they played it off like she didn't do it. I was told it was in the executive drive so only the executives could get to it. My boss was the only female executive and it was doctor's note from an OBGYN and she was the only one taking a class. They basically offered me a raise and title change after that. I took it knowing I was trying for a baby and wanted the money to save up. Going back I wish I held my ground and quit. My company used to give branded gifts to our clients. One employee volunteered to drive one about an hour away, and he took another employee with him. What he didn't tell anyone is that he didn't have a license, his car wasn't registered, and his brakes were bad. So inevitably his brakes failed while trying to stop at an intersection, and he totaled his car. Thankfully no one was seriously hurt, but he got into trouble when the cops came. My mom doesn't read it so I will type this out for her. We received an outside email with a photo attachment. The photograph was of a nurse we employed with what looked like a glass pipe is some sort on her lap. The email alleged that she was an addict. We found out later it came from an ex-girlfriend she had just broken up with. It prompted us to go seek out the nurse. When we arrived at her desk she was on the phone with a patient but visibly nodding off. We requested she come to the HR office to with us to talk. Then we confronted her with the allegation. She denied everything and agreed to a drug test. Instead of sending her to an outside lab we had one send technicians to our office building to administer the test. That's when things went south. She began telling us she needed to go out to her car. We believe this was because she planned to use synthetic urine or someone else's and us not sending her to an outside lab lost her the opportunity to do that. And we flatly told her that leaving the bathroom would be noted as a refusal to take the test which would mean an automatic termination. This woman proceeded to throw a tantrum on the floor of the bathroom for the next 7 hours of the day. We had to shut down that entire bathroom. Other employees started a rumor we were holding a pregnant woman hostage. And at lunchtime she demanded a meal. So I went to the cafeteria, purchased her a sandwich and drink, and then she ate it on the bathroom floor. After hours of tears and yelling 5pm rolled around. She calmly stood up and said it's the end of my shift so I'll be leaving now. We repeated to her that leaving would still be considered a refusal and grounds for immediate termination. At this time the technician, who had also been there watching all this for the last 7 hours, tried to intervene and talk some sense into her. Eventually she reluctantly agreed to a buckle swab rather than a urine test, and then she left for the day. Needless to say, the results we got back were positive and she was terminated as well as reported to the licensing boards. I though that was the end of it until several weeks later when she called to complain her insurance card was no longer valid and she couldn't pick up a prescription. This turned into an hour long discussion about how losing employment also means losing the benefits. The last sentence actually really sucks. In Germany if I lose my job I still have health insurance. My favorite was the dude who would have meetings with his boss via camera. He was remote, and while they discussed his, abysmal, performance, he would have naked women get up from his bed and walk around. He was told this was inappropriate several times. Continued. We fired him for fraud, a separate issue that was like a Tarantino film but gives too much away here. A separate issue that was like a Tarantino film. Based on these few bits of info, this guy's whole life sounds like a Tarantino film. I work for the civil service and the HR department, and I've heard some crazy things. A lot comes to mind, but I suppose the first thing that I thought of was the time that we were clearing out room old paperwork and I was relatively new. 
Some of the older colleagues were commenting on some of the files we were finding as they remembered the cases. Things like oh I remember this woman. She got married to this guy in the post office or this guy go through stage 4 cancer. Good for him. One of the files they picked up they just said casually remember this job. He's the one that stabbed his manager in the face and ended up with a promotion. Crazy. And just moved right on past. I was like whoa hold up. I need the end to that story please. Turns out they were out for a Christmas dinner and this guy had a fight with his manager. Grabbed a steak knife and stabbed him in the cheek. Because of some strange circumstances at the time and government and who he was connected to, they couldn't or wouldn't fire him so they decided to transfer him to a different department. Only that there were no more positions left at his grade, and he wouldn't settle for a lower grade so they ended up promoting him to a higher position including all benefits and pay. Civil service eh? If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.